started the first session. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Nervis Deliri. She is a Cambodian of 1974. She is a consultant pediatric emergency physician in King Faisal Specialist Hospital, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Please welcome. Police patrol. 
patrol wagons transported patients as there were no ambulances. Okay? Different names have been used for emergency departments. Accident and emergency, emergency ward, emergency room, casualty department, and emergency department. Emergency department staff were not trained for the delivery of acute care. So everybody thought, you know, they can do it. Now, what has become a definition of an emergency department now at present time? It's a play, emergency department is a medical treatment facility specialized in emergency medicine where acute care is provided to acutely ill patients. That's a new definition of the emergency department. Patients are provided evaluation, investigation, resuscitation, stabilization, appropriate initial treatment, and eventual discharge or timely referral. So that's what a job of an emergency physician is supposed to be anymore. These services are provided based on patient equity by qualified physicians. In emergency room, we don't say who came first. We said who is sicker. Patients can present to emergency department with any complaint at any time, 24 hours, seven days a week, and receive life-saving treatments in a matter of minutes. Emergency departments today, their location is most of the places on the ground floor of the hospital with a dedicated entrance. You don't go through hallways of the hospital to reach to the emergency room. You need to be close to the entrance of the hospital. Triage is the first stage the patient passes through on arrival to the emergency room, which is staffed by a triage nurse or nurses, depending how busy you are, who performs a brief assessment, does vital signs, assigns a chief complaint at a triage category or number, which determines their priority for admission to the emergency department bed and treatment. For example, somebody comes in and he's got a um, uh, cardiac arrest. That patient would be a category one or a category two and would be rushed into the room. Somebody comes and says, I've got a headache. That would be given a category four or a category five. And then wait till there is a position available, till there is a room available. Resuscitation rooms are assigned to every emergency room, which are areas or room where it is equipped with essential resuscitation tools to care for very ill or injured patients. There is a special procedure rooms in many emergency rooms that people do their casting, EKGs, or minor procedures that they need to take care of. There are other rooms in the emergency department <coughs> which is uh, um, called a psychiatric, uh, for example, you, the rooms are walled or padded so that these patients don't hurt themselves. There is an isolation room, there has to be an isolation room with a negative pressure for people who are highly infected. There are family counseling rooms. You have a dead or some uh, uh, problematic uh, patient, you need to sit down and talk to the family. You should have a place for that. And regular patient rooms or beds, which could be depending on which hospital you are working in. So these are some pictures which I'm going to share with you. This is entrance of the emergency room at Tawadi. This is at King Faisal Specialist Hospital. This is our area where the patients come in and they, where the two dead, uh, gentlemen are. This is where they come in, they register. In our hospital, of course, we are a specialist hospital. Most of our patients come by referral they, or they have a file in our hospital. So they come in there, they give their file number, and they are um, then given a number to go in. At the entrance of the emergency room, they, they go in and the triage nurse would see them. This is a triage area. Patients come in at the window. They will say what they are um, they're here for, and they are given numbers and then called in to do the vital signs. Following that, patients are uh, taken to the emergency rooms, and uh, many of our rooms, basically, they have monitors and so forth, and this room is for most part for some procedures. This is uh, another room. Now, 
emergency departments today, they have different setups. They have a nursing area, they have a nursing lounge, they have a physician station, and hopefully a physician lounge. That physicians in between their patients, if they want to relax, they want to have a cup of coffee, they can do that. Many emergency rooms now, they have an area which is called fast track. Fast track is an area that if you are a very busy emergency room and you see a lot of sick people, you will, your nurses, once they triage the patient as non-emergent or non-urgent, those patients go to the fast track and they are seen by somebody else rather than crowding your main emergency department. There has to be, in most of the emergency departments, outside the emergency department, there has to be a decontamination area. This is one of the requirements by JCIA, Joint Commission in the United States. And especially these days that we are dealing with the chemical warfare and so forth and so forth. There has to be a satellite lab in the emergency room because your main hospital lab, many times by the time you get some lab results back, it's going to be a long period. So if you have your own satellite lab, you can get the emergency department patients taken care faster. Emergency department staff, they consist of physicians, and uh, which could be adult emergency physicians and pediatric emergency physicians, physician assistant, nurses, patient care assistant, clerks, emergency administrators who deal with mo most of the complaints and so forth, social services and paramedics. Emergency department administrative staff uh, consists of a chairman, deputy chairman, secretaries, nursing program director, head nurse, and a charge nurse. Emergency physicians, even though speciality is only 50 years old, the attempts to deliver emergency care is essentially as old as medicine itself. You know that even though we may not have emergencies uh, right now training in uh, Pakistan, but we have physicians who are taking care of the patients in emergency departments. They are doing what they can do. They are doing the best they can do, and that has been going on for many years. And if I just take a few seconds, when I was a medical student, any time that there were eat holidays and it was a short holiday that I could not go home, I would go to emergency room, sit there and do little, little works for the emergency staff so they would allow me to suture a wound when a suture came in. So, you know, we've been doing emergency medicine. I didn't even dream one day I would be an emergency physician. Transition from general physician to ED physicians has occurred. Many people, they have got training and they've become an emergency physician. Emergency physician could be summarized as jack of all trades, master of nine. A master of none. We do everything, but we are not an exact specialist in that area, and that's where we call for help. This is one of our resuscitation rooms, as I was mentioning, and as you see, emergency room or emergency patient care is not a single-handed thing. You work as a team. You have a charge nurse, which is a recording. You have somebody who is uh, responsible for IV line. You have a physician there who is in charge of the airway, and you have other uh, nurses who will be assisting with that, and you have other physicians who will take care of the patient and documentation. Again, another scene that you have a patient. Uh, again, teamwork. And when there is an opportunity, get together with old classmates, old colleagues, and old friends. The gathering is not just about eating. It's just that there is not much time left. And thank you very much.